Food is a necessity of life. Yet, never in the history of mankind have we been faced with such abundance of food in the modern developed world. With increasing affluence and globalization, we have easy access to food. It is everywhere around us. Faced with such gastronomic temptations, why do some people tend to overeat and become overweight, while others are more able to control their food intake and remain lean? How do our eating behaviour traits affect signals to the brain, which in turn influence our food choices and appetite for food? Hi there, I'm Mary Chong, a research scientist from the Clinical Nutrition Research Centre, ASTAR in Singapore. My team, together with a team from the Duke NUS Graduate Medical School, seeks to investigate the links across the brain, appetite and obesity. Just like personality traits, people also have different eating behavioural traits. People can be categorised into either having high or low dietary disinhibition. Dietary disinhibition is characterised by the tendency to eat regardless of prior food intake, responding in state to food cues, the social environment and emotional stress. It has been observed that compared to persons with low dietary disinhibition, those with high dietary disinhibition consume more food and were more likely to gain weight over time. In general, high disinhibition individuals appear to be hyper-responsive to the rewarding properties of food and to have diminished satiety. While a few studies suggest that HD individuals have a different brain response to food-related stimuli. They do not explain how these observed alterations in brain signals relate to individuals' tendency to overeat. We hypothesize that HD individuals place a higher value on food, thus predisposing them to overconsumption. To investigate this, we examine how brain signals associated with food valuation choice differed between individuals of low and high disinhibition. We studied each of 30 healthy male participants twice, once after being fasted and again after taking a small portion of food that did not amount to a full meal. Each participant had a standardised lunch that was constituted according to his body weight. In the session where the participant had to consume an additional meal, this meal was about 20% of his total energy requirements for the day and was taken about 45 minutes before undergoing fMRI. The critical experiment conducted during fMRI was one where participants viewed food pictures and indicated using button presses how strongly they preferred the test food to a personalised reference food. The process of viewing and rating preference for the test food was expected to generate valuation signals in the brain. These signals are generated by the ventral medial prefrontal cortex. The strength of food valuation signals in the ventral medial prefrontal cortex is thought to relate to how strongly a participant is driven to consume that food. In the data analysis, participants were divided into two groups according to the median value of dietary disinhibition. 16 participants belong to the high disinhibition or HD group and 14 participants were classified as low disinhibitors or LD. Just before being imaged, each person rated his subjective fullness and hunger using a visual analog scale. Persons from both groups indicated that they were less full if fasted and more full when they were given the pre-scanned meal. LD subjects, who also tended to be of normal weight, showed high food valuation signals in the ventral medial prefrontal cortex when fasted, but devalued food after being fed. Critically, HD participants who rated their subjective fullness and satiety in a similar manner as LD participants showed an increase in food valuation signals in the ventral medial prefrontal cortex after being fed. Additionally, we found a significant negative correlation between disinhibition score and the shift in neural food valuation signal from the fasted to the fed state. This pattern of findings is reminiscent of the priming phenomena observed in drug addiction research, where the presence rather than the absence of 
the drug in the body serves to activate the motivational mechanisms for drug-seeking behavior. Thus, whereas feeding HD individuals may lower homeostatic hunger as reflected in decreased subjective hunger and increased fullness ratings, feeding may increase hedonic hunger, leading HD individuals to seek food regardless of energy requirements. This may be why there is a high correlation between dietary disinhibition and weight. Interestingly, in research conducted elsewhere, persons who are able to factor in health considerations in their food choices are able to generate self-control signals in the lateral prefrontal cortex. Perhaps in future research, HD participants may be trained to modulate their aberrant food valuation signals. We're certainly excited by our findings, but remember, this may be only one of several neural explanations for why some people are driven to eat more than others. Meanwhile, we certainly hope we've given you food for thought.